A poster on my channel asked me why climate critics were getting so excited about a video uploaded by Ivor Cummings, showing a very old video clip, sorry, the best climate clip he's ever seen, featuring Danish glaciologist Jørgen Peter Stephenson. And to my Danish friends out there, I may not have nailed the pronunciation, but you have to admit, at least I'm now trying. After watching the four-minute clip, or as Ivor Cummings calls it, Wow! Everything is summed up in four minutes flat. Pure hardcore science. Truth in science. I didn't get why everyone was so excited either. Ivor wrote, Absorb the graph shown and think on it. Uh, OK. But what is it that I'm absorbing that's supposed to get me worked up? Along this axis is going back in time. This is the last 8,000 years we have plotted here. On this axis we have the temperatures, at the site in, in Greenland and we can see that if we go back from now about 4,000 years ago we would have temperatures up here for about 4,000 years that were two and a half degrees warmer on average than today. So there must be something in this video that overturns in four minutes the scientific conclusion that global warming is due to rising levels of CO2. And if you're already typing a furious comment saying, it's obvious, it's in the clip you've just seen, remember Potholer's axiom. Anytime you think you've stumbled upon something in a YouTube video that completely overturns our scientific understanding, then consider the possibility that maybe scientists know something you don't. So hold clicking the send button because you're about to find out what it is that Stephenson and other scientists know about this graph that a lot of bloggers and vloggers obviously don't know. Here, for example, is Stephenson again, this time giving a speech that Cummins won't show. It is a fact that carbon dioxide and methane absorb infrared radiation. End of story. More CO2 and methane in the atmosphere will trap infrared radiation. So is he contradicting himself? Has he changed his mind? Have I gone mad? Have Ivor Cummins and his subscribers spotted something in this four-minute video clip that none of the world's climate scientists have spotted in the last 20 years, including Stephenson himself? No, none of the above. But the best way to find out what they all think Stephenson is saying is to ask them. So I tried prodding by responding to individual posts. Finally, I did get some replies, and this is where the fun really began. Let's start with a poster who seemed to think that Stephenson's results proved that the hockey stick reconstruction, which shows a steep rise in global temperature at the end of the 20th century, is delusional garbage. Actually, I pointed out Stephenson's Greenland result confirms the numerous hockey stick reconstructions. Yes, there were many. Mitchell wasn't impressed. Anyone who watches the video can see and hear the man say Greenland medieval warm period was warmer than present, Mitchell replied. In the first 15 seconds of the video, you're a lying sack of shit. Now that's true, of course. Not the bit about the lying sack of shit, but the fact that the man, Dr. Stephenson, did say that. We believe that in Greenland, the medieval warm period was about one and a half degrees warmer on average than, than today. But what does Mitchell think Stephenson means by today or the present? He assumes it means right now in 2023, because obviously we're watching this today, in the present. But that can't be right, because Stephenson did this interview 20 years ago. So maybe it means the day Stephenson did the interview. But it can't mean that either, because he took those measurements several years before the interview, so does he mean the late 1990s when he did the measurements? In which case, why is he saying today and not a few years ago? And what date is the present? To get around this ambiguity, researchers decided in the late 1950s to make 1950 the benchmark for all dating. So the term before present, or BP, which you'll see on most graphs looking back in time, always means before 1950 more recent reconstructions have started to use B2K instead, in other words, before the year 2000. Astute viewers of this channel will already know this, because I mentioned it when a scientist called Craig Lowell tried to disprove the hockey stick curve by making his own temperature reconstruction, and spectacularly falling flat when he thought the present referred to the year 2000. 
So he was putting low 1950 temperatures into the part of the x-axis that represented the year 2000 and completely omitting 25 years of strong warming. When the dates were corrected and the recent temperature rise added, Lowell got exactly the same hockey stick curve as everyone else. So Stephenson's graph only goes up to 1950. If you add temperatures up to the year 2000, shown in black, it's clear that Greenland temperatures are now higher than the medieval warm period, and 20 years on, in 2023, they're higher still. Even though it's 20 years old, the video clip has recently gone viral on the internet, and all the bloggers and vloggers who copy it make exactly the same mistake in thinking the present means 2023. A millennium ago, the temperature in Greenland was 1.5 degrees higher than today. 4,000 years ago, it was, on average, 2.5 degrees warmer than today. We live in the coldest period of the last 10,000 years. So, following the exhortation to absorb the graph and think on it doesn't do us much good if, like Cummins, we haven't had the training to understand what the graph represents or where the x-axis ends. Tony Heller, who went by the name of Stephen Goddard back then, also didn't know that before present means 1950. Understanding what before present means is actually sophomore year stuff on any geology course, and you don't even need a geology degree to look it up. It's also important to understand that Stephenson is measuring Greenland temperatures. They pretty much follow the global pattern, but not exactly. Greenland is subject to its own regional influences, such as the North Atlantic Oscillation. Another claim that came out of the video clip was that it's impossible to judge whether the current warmth is natural or man-made. Even in the selectively edited clip, Stephenson never said anything of the kind. Here's what he actually said. We, and I agree completely that we have had a global temperature increase in the 20th century. Yes. But an increase from what? Probably an increase from the lowest point we've had for the last 10,000 years. And this means that it will be very hard indeed to prove whether the increase of temperature in the 20th century was man-made or it's a natural variation. Other scientists have grappled with exactly the same problem. Stephenson said Greenland came out of a low point, the lowest temperature in 10,000 years, in about 1875. Around 1875, we have the lowest point in the last 8,000 years. That increase up to 1950 could not have only been due to the small increase in CO2 concentration because the forcing was too small. There were other factors, variations in solar irradiance and volcanic activity, for example, that also contributed. So how much was each contribution? As Stephenson says, difficult to say. Around 1950, the Earth was going into another cooling period, and the reasons for that are a lot clearer. Most researchers attribute that to heavy industrial pollution during the Second World War and subsequent industrialization, and it's from that low point that the current period of warming began. Anti-pollution laws pushed aerosol concentration down in the mid-1970s, which is when our current period of warming began. Over the last 45 years, the picture has therefore been a lot clearer. Aerosol concentration has been steadily rising, thanks to the industrialization of China and India, and solar irradiance has been stable and then falling. So both of those factors tend to push temperatures downwards. The only forcing that can be responsible for the steep upward rise in temperature is carbon gas, CO2 and methane, and they're warming the Earth exactly as predicted. It's odd that so many people who don't accept the very obvious link between greenhouse gas concentration and global warming came out to cheer Stephenson because they completely misunderstood what he was saying. Yet more evidence of the climate hoax matches what a few silent scientists have been saying for years. This is all a hoax. Nice to see honest science, which also means climate change is a natural phenomenon. I think it's great that all the critics are now willing to embrace one of the most outspoken scientists on climate change and happy to believe what Stephenson says. Because here's what else he's been saying about climate change, and this didn't get selected for the best climate clip Ivor Cummins has ever seen. Right now, by emitting greenhouse gases, we are doing the same 
with the climate system as the investment banks in the U.S. did when they were selling subprime loans in the economy in 2006 and 7. If something odd is going on at the base in these ice streams, and there are a lot of ice streams in Western Antarctica too, then it can upset the entire apple cart. All of a sudden you would have an unstable ice sheet that might break away, not over several centuries, but over a couple of decades. And that would be disastrous. Inside an ice age, the climate is extremely unstable. And maybe by enhancing our emissions of greenhouse gases, we are actually tipping the climate system to become yet unstable again as it used to be. We can face a climate change that happens just as sudden as a financial crisis. I did try to explain this to followers of Ivor Cummins's channel, and I addressed my post to Ivor himself. He seems to be saying that all the models assume a gradual increase in temperature because of the CO2 being added to the atmosphere, but that assumes the climate plays nice. In fact, ice cores show that the climate can be destabilized very easily and that by adding CO2, we're tipping the climate to become unstable again. Is that what he's saying? Actually, I knew that was what Stephenson was saying because here's another clip of him saying just that. With an enhanced greenhouse effect from uh, burning of fossil fuel, CO2 and methane and so on, you would have a gradual increase in temperature. That's what all the models show you. It's sort of a gradual increase in temperature. But that's assuming that the climate plays nice. And we actually know from the ice cores that the climate does not play nice all the time. I quickly got a response from Ivor Cummins himself, who called Stephenson's delicate climate inference a ruse and the biggest scam of all. The same research he'd just praised as everything is summed up in four minutes flat, pure hardcore science. Truth in science. These bloggers and vloggers make their money with clickbait headlines, promoting heavily edited video clips designed to present a distorted view of scientific research. Cummins has promised to interview experts on this over the coming months, so I'm going to issue this challenge. The obvious expert to interview would be the person whose research is the focus of the video you showed, Ivor. Jorn Stephenson whose research you acclaimed as pure hardcore science and truth in science. Or you could interview one of Stephenson's colleagues, other glaciologists working on the GRIP program over the last 25 years, who've co-authored his papers. If you're not interested in informing your followers about what Stephenson says or what his research was found, then you'll avoid talking to any of them. Let's see who he picks. <laughs>